I wanted to start learning how to make generative art, and I decided to start with the JavaScript library p5.js because it seems to be popular and allows you to generate art within a web browser. And there's a nice editor on the library's website to test out your code. It's a good library for generative art because it has these nice built-in functions so that you don't have to write much code to draw shapes and stuff. Like, here's a line. And lots of random lines. Here's a line that wiggles. Here's a load of different coloured squares. Squares with rounded corners. A bunch of circles. Regular polygons with a varying number of sides. And here's a pentagon that rotates and follows the movement of your mouse while changing colour. So let's try something a bit more interesting. Remember that scene from The Office with the DVD logo bouncing around the screen? Oh, come on! I think I can recreate that. We need the logo. We need it to travel in a diagonal direction. And make it go in the opposite direction when it hits the edge of the canvas. And we also need it to change hue when it hits the edge of the canvas. There is no hue changing function built into p5.js, but I found an answer on Stack Overflow with the hue changing algorithm written in Python, so I just converted that into JavaScript. And now it's done. To make something that looks kind of like smashed glass, you can make it draw a line that stops when it hits the edge or another line, and then choose a random point along all the existing lines to draw another line that follows the same rules, and just keep drawing lines like that. I made the line sometimes randomly change direction as well. If you layer a load of different coloured and different sized rectangles together, play with the transparency and blend modes of them, and then add a grainy layer on top, you get something that resembles paint blended together. A key concept to be aware of when making generative art is something called Perlin noise. If you use regular random noise to choose the colour for each little square in this canvas, it will look like this. But if you use Perlin noise to choose the colour, you get smooth gradients like this. And you can do a lot of stuff with this type of noise. For example, if you use the noise to offset the position of a bunch of points, you can get something like this. Or you can distort parallel lines like this or a checkerboard, or a grid. You can also use Perlin noise to control the direction of stuff. Like I made this weird thing with lots of randomly sized rectangles that are filled with lines. You can also do 3D stuff with P5.js. It has built-in functions for a plane, a box, a cylinder, a cone, a torus, and a sphere. I have to say, I didn't realise how easy it would be to do stuff like create a sphere that rotates and moves around displaying your webcam on it. Another thing I did was use Perlin noise to control the depth of a load of boxes and created this wave type of thing. A more advanced concept than all of this is shaders. Shaders use the graphics processing unit in your computer rather than the CPU. This means that code can be executed for all pixels on a canvas at once, rather than one by one, which means it executes a lot faster and opens up a lot more possibilities for what you can produce. The downside is that writing code that applies to all pixels at once is less intuitive than writing normal P5.js code code, and you have to write it in a lower level programming language, meaning that you have to write a lot more maths to get the shapes and stuff that you want. So far I can understand how to make gradients like this, and sort of how you make lines and shapes and stuff, but I need to do a lot more playing around with it before I'll be able to make anything interesting. And that's about as far as I've gotten so far with generative art using p5.js. If I create anything more interesting in future, I will make another video. In the meantime, you can find links to most of the sketches I showed in this video on my website if you are interested.